Hey everybody, um, this is my first time doing this, so bear with me as i just never done anything like this before in my 27 years in this world, but current events have uh, kind of changed that for me, and I mean, I've been speaking a lot over the years on certain issues, and I have been reaching nobody, just posting on Facebook and all of that, so, but I was actually very inspired by um, a channel name. Republic in Distress and Restore the Republic 76. His name is Tim. Tim, if you are watching this, you are a good man and you're very inspiring and I stand with you any day, brother. First thing, I want to get into a couple things. One, I am not a Republican. I am not a Democrat. I'm not anything like that at all. I don't like the current president, Joe Biden. I do didn't like the previous president, Donald Trump. I believe that they are puppets of the New World Order. I don't know if you've heard of that, but if you did, good, because it's something that's going on right now, and these people are literally relentless. Um, another thing is, I do a lot of reading in my spare time, and there's just a lot of things going on right now that we all need to be aware of. We all need to... Uh, come together really and and stand for freedom like put all that other stuff aside I mean why why do you care who's using which bathroom it's not you it's not anybody else's business really I mean if somebody wants to go into a different bathroom go for it guess what in other countries they have unisex bathrooms because they're mature enough to even have <sighs> I just don't even know what else to say about that issue, so I'm not getting into it. Okay, now that that's out of the way, and I will give you my name. My name is Austin, but we're on first name basis for now until I start doing this some more, and then we can get into it over time. Um, I'm 27 years old as of six days from now, or five days, whatever the 27th is, or something like that. Um, I live in Ohio. I have a wife, no children. Um, <clears throat> yes, I smoke cigarettes. It's a horrible habit, and this is very stressful because I've never done this before, so you're going to have to bear with me. The first thing that I wanted to talk about, everybody should read the book, COVID-19, The Great Reset. I'll say it again, COVID-19... The Great Reset. It was written by Klaus Schwab, who is the founder and executive chairman at the World Economic Forum. And I've read the book twice. I'm actually working on a third time reading it. And to say the least, it's, it's terrifying. Um, this book is a literal outline of their plans for a world government a totalitarian world government one of the chapters is literally called the return of big government that's something that we should all be very very concerned about this guy goes on all the time and he's talking about inclusiveness and sustainability and that word sustainable, I mean, if you're watching this channel and you're watching my video, which not many of you probably are, but if you are, you should already know, because you're looking up this type of thing, about the United Nations Agenda 2030 for Sustainable Development. And it's just, I mean, you have Agenda 21, which was adopted in 1992 by like 192 countries or something like that. And it was literally a way for them to get the entire world behind one agenda toward a global government. Now, Agenda 2030 is like a checkpoint. Like, okay, we got all this stuff done here, these 17 goals. And then there's Vision 2050. I haven't looked much into that one yet, I have to say. But I'm sure it's around the same type of thing because these people, they're, they're generations and generations in planning. It's not like, oh, we're going to put this guy into office and he's going to fix everything and make everything better because the world is sunshine and rainbows. No. These people have been at this literally for a long, 
long time. Um, like I said, this, this video right now is just about an introduction, informational things. I don't have all the kinks worked out, of course. This is my first one, but I really just wanted to get on here because I feel like it is my duty. I've been playing the role of messenger for about 10 years now. Uh, a little longer if you want to count before the time that I was on Facebook, but another thing that we really need to keep an eye on besides the Great Reset, which is happening now, and I'll urge everybody to order that book. Go to Amazon if you have a profile. You might be able to find it. Barnes & Noble, I'm not sure, anywhere else. But get that book and please read it. Now, my next video, I will probably do like a breakdown of the table of contents just so like the people that might stick around here and not look at my ugly face all day would have a better understanding of what of what this is now of course everything sounds good in theory when you're talking about oh we're gonna make the world a better place and it's gonna be equitable and sustainable and <clears throat> everybody's gonna have a fair chance in this and that but the reality is is that we are all going to be equally poor and miserable and a lot of people dead <clears throat> and that brings me to my next point which is the Georgia Guidestones now I know a lot of people know what they are a lot of people probably haven't looked much into them but it's a monument in Everton Georgia I believe and it's like eight miles outside of Atlanta or something like that. So if you're in the Atlanta area, you might want to go out there and take a look at that for yourself so you can see it. Now, there are these giant slabs. It's nicknamed the American Stonehenge because just people are just calling it that. I really don't know why. And um, the author apparently is R.C. Christian which to me that sounds like Rosicrucian and if you know anything about the Rose Cross and the Rosicrucians and the Order of the Quest or the Knights of Malta or anything like that we'll get into that as time goes on of course but if you have not listened to Bill Cooper, William Cooper everybody should at least do that once in their life he has the most extensive research library that I have ever seen in my entire life Unfortunately, he is no longer with us because he was murdered on November 5th, 2001. Yes, that long ago. November 5th, 2001. On his own doorstep. And the sad part is he's seen it coming. Now, things led up to his death, but in short, on June 28th, 2001, he predicted 9-11. He even said who they would blame it on why, what would come out of it, and sure enough, it did. Absolutely, it did. They blamed Osama bin Laden. We went to war in Iraq and then Afghanistan and however many countries to this day, there's still people dying over there. It's not a very good thing, and it's all just about making it a part of the new world order. But the main thing right now that we all need to be focusing on is this great reset that's what COVID-19 is I don't care what you think I don't care if you get on here and tell me about asymptomatic carriers or wearing a mask or anything like that I don't care about any of that I don't care about their vaccine which we'll get into that too it's not a good thing in the book COVID-19 the great reset Klaus Schwab writes about a hundred different times that coronavirus and COVID-19 in specific is nothing, let me repeat that, nothing at all. It is a vehicle on which they forward their pre-pandemic efforts. It just occurred to me that I've been calling it a pandemic for so long that it was just kind of hard for me to say pandemic. That's another story. Anywho, we all need to take a really good look at our lives right now and we need to get out of this two party, my guy's better than your guy, 
um, whoever is the best president ever and this and that. No. Donald Trump was not an outsider. He was an insider from day one, a two-time billionaire. And he served his purpose well. We'll get into that more as I start figuring this out so I can show you things to back my claims. So I'm not on here just talking like everybody else, like I'm doing right now. This is only for the sake of this first video. If you made it this far without turning me off, good for you. That means you can probably sit through a good bit of truth telling. Everything I'm telling you is 100% true. The two-party system is a process called the Hegelian dialectic. They use this, it's thesis, antithesis, to get a synthesis. For example, we'll use the Democrat, Republican, blue, red, whatever it is. Let's use the invasion of the Middle East in 2001 and let's use um, what they were doing back then in order to achieve the synthesis that they wanted. What was the goal that they wanted? They wanted to pass in, insane laws that would restrict us, Americans, freedom more and more over time until eventually it would all just be dissolved into what's coming very soon. Also, they needed to invade the Middle East because there were seven countries back then that did not sign up to be on the um, Rothschild, Rockefeller, Central Bank business. And we'll get into that too. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Okay, so they wanted to invade the Middle East and take away rights away from Americans. That's the goal that they wanted to implement. Okay, so what did they do? They created a a problem. Okay, they dropped two buildings in New York City. If you've made it this far, 20 years later, and you still can't figure out that donkeys didn't train whatever to fly Cessnas into buildings. I'm just making fun of the people that believe in the whole, you know, Islamic terrorist thing, and they hijacked planes and the best security force in the world and flew into unrestricted air or restricted airspace and knocked down two of our buildings and killed so many people that fell at free fall speed with no other explosives if you still believe that i'm sorry you are i don't want to be mean so i will just say that you are very very uninformed and you have your head buried in the sand so they create the problem they knock down two buildings in new york city then they get a reaction, which is the antithesis. What reaction did they get? Oh, Lord, I was like seven years old at the time, but I remember people just crying for war. They wanted to find out who was responsible for all of this. They wanted to go start dropping bombs and leveling people in the Middle East because of the propaganda that they've been ramping up before then. And people already figured who did it because that's what the media does. They plant ideas in your head beforehand so you know who to blame when something happens. So they get a reaction, and some of you might be old enough to remember, everybody was in unison, which was a good thing, people in unison, but it was for the wrong reason at the time. Everybody was crying out for war, they wanted to invade countries, and then it was really easy for them to invade the Middle East. They actually had this all planned out in Project for a New American Century. It's a 93-page document written in 98 by neocons and other war hawks. John Bolton was one of them, and he's still around today. So it's like, what are you doing, guy? Anyway, they talk about how they can sustain, like, a hundred year global war and all this stuff and it would take forever to implement all this change absent some catastrophic and catalyzing event like a new Pearl Harbor. That's an exact quote from the from the document. <laughs> anyway, so after they create the problem and they knock the buildings down, then they get the reaction out of us, which was the crying for war the whatever else was going on back then the false patriotism is what I call it 
and then they get their synthesis, the goal they wanted in the first place. Passed the Patriot Act, created the Department of Homeland Security, invaded countries in the Middle East. And it worked out really well for them, and it still is, I have to say. And that's just an example of Hegelian dialectic. But they use that in smaller things and larger things. For instance, this last presidential election and the whole Republican-Democrat dynamic to begin with, that's an example of the Hegelian dialectic because they get opposing sides. Thesis, antithesis, Republican, Democrat. They pretend to argue with each other over important issues that they have no interest in helping any of us with or anything like that. And then every four to eight years, they alternate this guy, that guy, this guy, that guy. Because it gives people a sense of change and it gives people a sense of, um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for here? Sorry, it's my first time doing this. Please bear with me. It gives people a sense of everything's going to be okay because we now have a new guy in office. Like the current situation. Everybody was saying that it was so bad under Donald Trump and all this stuff was going on and this and that. 500,000 Americans dead, blah, blah, blah. But now it's all better and it's all rainbows because oh, old creepy old Joe's in there, right? Right, guys? Creepy Joe? You know what I'm talking about? Either way. But it's the same agenda. They're getting ready to pass the um, Domestic Terrorist Prevention Act and that is to say the least, terrifying. And, <clears throat> excuse me, Donald Trump, the past four years, with the whole QAnon thing, with the whole make America great, keep America great, patriot, America first, you know the rhetoric. What his presidency allowed them to do, what they could not do before, was marginalize all of these different groups Christians quote unquote conspiracy theorists um, pro-America people people that love the constitution me I love the constitution so if you hate freedom leave now because you're going to hate me just think about all the things that Donald Trump embodied as a person and as a president think about all the people that were involved in his movement. Now, the rhetoric is that if you are a real patriot, you care about the Constitution, you love America, you love this country, you were, you were born here, you were raised here, you love freedom, you love everything about it, the people, the things that it has to offer, the opportunities it gives you, Whatever else you could say about this country. As of late, not so much. But before, 